Welcome to the TV Tuners Podcast, where your central guide to the small screen, Stairmaster, takes you on a tantalizing journey through the labyrinth of television, Rose Rose Emoji, TV Emoji. Ah, dear listeners, it's me, Stairmaster, the seductive sultan of the screen, the man with the remote control to your desires. (sighs) Smirking Emoji, Fire Emoji. You're about to embark on a journey filled with steamy insights and scorching takes that only someone with my voluptuous vision and luscious understanding of TV can o- o- offer. Prepare to be enthralled as I lavish you with knowledge, wrapped in velvet tones of arrogance and allure. I'm not just a guide, I'm an experience, an odyssey of opulent opinion. Darmos, kiss some host You see, while others merely watch TV, I, I caress its depths. I unravel its secrets, and I do so with a flair that's as irresistible as it is deranged. Wine up glass, cyclone emoji. In this podcast, expe- expect nothing less than the unbridled passion, a touch of madness. Insights so profound they'll feel like the a forbidden romance with your television. Together we'll explore the latest, the greatest, and the downright bizarre in TV. All while I condescendingly bestow upon you the wisdom you didn't even know you were craving. Performing hearts emoji, crown emoji. So adjust your antennas, turn up the volume and let yourself be swept away by the sultry, slightly unhinged, and utterly unmatched Stairmaster. This, my dear listeners, is TV Tuners. Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a wild, weird, and wonderfully wicked ride. Rocket emoji, Milky Way emoji. Welcome to the ecstasy of television as only I can reveal be alone. Sparkly hot emoji, TV emoji. So welcome to TV Tuners. It's a television podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive into the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is my co-host and uh, the guy who's looking for the right opportunity to uh, betray his yeah. master. Oh, I was hoping I'd get to be the British guy. <laughs> I had a voice lined up. Uh, British guy. You're arresting me for enjoying a succulent Chinese meal? (laughs) No good. No good here. Uh, And with us as always, of course, is our other co-host and rival lord who's trying to get me killed, Kyoran. Listen, there's nothing personal. We're just doing some, some feudal politics. It's like, it's fine. Just chill out. Relax, bro. It's all good, man. You're coming real strong with the insults, though, man. I don't know. You suck. You suck, bro. With all due respects, oh. suck my penis from the rear end. <laughs> what if that was just how they <laughs> It kind of is. They are. They pretty much do. Yeah, pretty they're, much. They're, like, they, they're, they're very polite, but they're basically just saying, throat my cock, noob. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Lord Ishiduro, you should kill yourself now. Your life holds nothing of value. You are worth. You have as much worth as a summer ant. Speaking of low tier god, there's no black people on this show. Did you notice? There's no African American gentlemen in the show. Why is that? I guess guess the people who made this must be racist. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's true. Um, welcome to another exciting edition of TV Tuners. 
We're back at it for another week. We got a lot to talk about. Did you know there were samurai in Mexico in the 1600s? Oh, is that are they going to do a show about that? <laughs> Maybe. Probably not. I'm pretty sure the next book this the guy wrote after this was about the British guy going to Taiwan. Oh. Hmm. Uh, yes. Yeah, so and it's another exciting edition. We're here. We're talking about a lot of stuff. So let's let's get into it, huh? If you're listening, you got any quips, comments, questions, foresights, otherwise, well, why not send them to us at our email address and we can read them aloud on the podcast. That's right. All you got to do is send them to tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. What's that email address, Keo Ryan? Uh, tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. That's right. Your email could go here. Uh, and with that, let us let me oh. ask an important question. Just, you know, just throw it out there. Just get it out of the way. What did you guys watch this week? Anything fun? Interesting? I finished, Something you want to discuss? I finished watching Justified. Ooh, okay. That last scene, it's just like... So incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> like, it sort of, like, sort of mods yeah. the rest of the season by comparison. I, th- I uh, now that you've finally seen the entire series, you understand how I hope that our uh, friendship ends one day. <laughs> Just one of us. With you in prison. <laughs> Me in prison, you and, me, and you me, the red, the justified roller. Yeah, except I'm slightly evil now because I got a black hat. What is? What oh. do you think that symbolized? Him taking the autistic guy's hat. What? What's going on? Uh, what are we talking we're about? We're talking about, here? about justified. justified. Yeah. yeah we've talked about this he, before. He, he took a hat and he put the hat on. Yeah, and now there was he's evil. There was a showdown at high noon with the black hat guy. And he won. He took the hat? Yeah, he took the black hat because he got shot in the side of the head, so his other hat was ruined. I guess the only way to understand what it signifies is to watch no. the, the sequel no. show that I haven't watched yet. No. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Not- anyway, my, my goal is that, yes, I am in jail and you're visiting me and I say, like, oh, we used the podcast together. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> That's uh, I mean, that's the. I think that's the end goal. That should be the end goal for anybody's friendship with anybody. No, Kyo, you can't. You just can't understand the pathos. These guys are. I can't. Fuck. You got- yeah, you have to. You have to experience six seasons of their relationship to get there. Okay, I want to reminisce about like the debacle of episode three hundred, <laughs> where like th- like a bunch of people died because of our podcast or something. <laughs> the infinity pool incident. <laughs> Yeah, it's less like the it's less like an infinity pool that you get into, and more well, like the infinity pool movie. <laughs> we made a pool with infinite um, water, and it became a black hole. But it needs infinite <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah, for um, our podcast episode. So that's a tune in on Justin. Yes. FX does it again. And I'm glad they ended it on a decisive note. Yes, never never brought it back for some reason or another. Some bizarre tangent where he goes to Detroit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, we used to dig coal together. Now. Or I forgot, probably. Right. <laughs> that yeah. weighed so heavily on my and I was having dreams about Justified afterwards. I did not watch Dang. Justified, Swanson. Why not? Well, you should get on it, if you ask me. It's about cowboys, is that right? It's a... I mean, it's they're a, not cowboys, no, it's, technically. It's a neo-western. He's a U.S. Marshal. Who, gets, okay. who goes back to his hometown of Kentucky after he gets kicked out of yeah. the Florida Marshal Service for shooting a guy. He does, and, the, and you see Keo, the shooting... Was justified. But also, he said, told the guy he had 24 hours to leave Miami or he would shoot him on sight. And he stayed in Miami? And yeah. Shot him. <laughs> but he drew first, so it's justified. 
Right. But then people are asking him, what would you have done if he hadn't drawn first? And he's like, uh... <laughs> that's kind of the thing of the show. No comment. Yeah, and he wears a cowboy hat, so it is sort of... Yeah, it is a, it's a neo-Western, like Sayer said. Okay. Anyway, it's a tune-in, if you ask me. Just a lowly <laughs> TV host. TV podcast host. Aren't you like the TV um, something? Like, you had a big title. What was it? I'm the television sultan. The sexual sultan of the <laughs> airwaves. Oh, yeah. yeah. Strange. <laughs> Normally, I don't listen to the opener, but uh, I listened to that near three-minute opener, and it was a lot of just weird sexual energy. I don't know, man. There was just this pipe that was leaking gas, and I decided to sit by it, and it all just came to me naturally. Stare, I told you... Yeah, we should that, do something about that pipe. I told you that that pipe is not not safe. That pipe is my stay news with now. It. Yeah, why does our house have an exhaust pipe? Well... It's it's for the boiler room, like I've been telling you guys. Yeah, how else are we supposed to heat our water? you also say don't go into the boiler room. Well, yeah, because the boiler's leaking. Hot steam. Oh. Yeah, I don't like the sound. Yeah, that could literally sever your face. Yeah, yeah don't go no. into the boiler room. We had, you, you know, Melvin the maintenance man? No. Now Melvin the maintenance yeah, well, melt. Who's that? <laughs> yeah, he's dead, Swanson. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he did his best Raiders. <laughs> now of... <laughs> I feel bad that I don't know him. <laughs> yeah, it was straight up Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like he opened the door and his face melted. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So Uh-oh. if you're wondering why our gas bill is so high, uh, it's probably because of the boiler room having issues. I'm wondering why we have a gas bill. I don't remember paying it. This is just like Oil Ocean and Sonic Mania. Yeah, well, we we haven't we haven't paid. Yeah, we have to like pull switches to, to, lower <laughs> to the... keep it. Yeah, to keep ourselves from dying. Remember when Sonic got his face blown off in Oil Ocean? <laughs> yeah, Swanson, we don't pay the gas bill. That's why we had, it, remember that guy who came by. He was like had a clipboard. And he was trying to get money. We had to fight him. That was that was because we haven't paid our gas bill. Oh, I thought he was just like. Selling Girl Scout cookies. No, yeah, the, no, I would have bought the cookies, but yeah, the, I got a sweet tooth right now. See, the the reason Just why they now. haven't been able to turn off our right gas now. is because it requires them to physically turn this valve, and we've been, you know, preventing them from doing so. Yeah, with we're force. on top of a gas main actually for the whole city of Denver. Yeah, yeah. So, which is probably why no one else lives here. It's just half a house. Yeah. Well, it's a house split in half, but yeah, we... for the purpose of filming a sitcom. Right. And we, but this is why we uh, do not have neighbors. Yeah. True. Yeah. So I, I'm just hoping we don't have another one of those police standoffs because the last one was very, very stressful, and I was very upset. <laughs> no, I 2024. Like pretty, uh, 2024, yeah. the year of good vibes. <laughs> I feel like we came to a pretty clear understanding with the police last time. And since they all, since all police officers are very rational individuals, they shot. They sure shot pumpkin. Fine. They shot pumpkin. <laughs> Rest in peace, pumpkin. Well, uh, Akio, I didn't want to tell you this, but I did tell them to shoot pumpkin. What? Yeah, look, they need to save face. Yeah, they needed to shoot something. The guy told me as much. How could you sacrifice a pumpkin? It was either him or the crab, Keo. Yeah, mm. the, crab, the crab's the mascot. Everyone loves the TV tuner's crab. People are buying shirts with this, yeah. this crab on it. Maybe we'll should. see him again one of these days. The police or the... pumpkin? <laughs> no, I meant the, I meant the crab. I saw the crab. Oh last yeah, I haven't week. seen him around. I hope oh. he didn't go to the boiler room. <laughs> oh no, no he, he would be a cooked crab. We'd have to oh, eat yeah, him. We would have smelled that. Yeah, especially if we threw some butter in the boiler room. Yeah, don't put food in there. Well, now I feel like I should throw some butter in there. I think you should throw some hams in there. <laughs> Steam them? I can't believe yes. you said this. But yeah, I saw the crab last week. He's taken up smoking. Oh. Well, that's fine. Oh. Crabs don't get cancer, I'm pretty sure. Listen, I'm going to take Stair's word for that. <laughs> I mean, zero literally... Research. 
cancer free is the way to be, and that's why I'm turning into a crab. Well, I'm not really worried about the crab's health. I'm worried about two things. The first thing I'm worried about is the crab's aesthetic. I just don't know if that's the right. <laughs> okay, so the knife, that's fine, but the cigarette. Yeah, like, I feel like it's cooler to have a knife and a cigarette than to have just one. Well, yeah, well, he he does that both. He has a knife in one hand and a cigarette in the other. Okay, but what if he has yeah, to get cool. a little tube? What if he has to get, like, a little tube for his voice box? That would, that would be way less cool. Wait, he, t- he talks? Well, he makes, like, the little bubbling, clicking noises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought you were and saying it wouldn't like, just sound the same if it was like cookie. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you were saying like the crab talked to you and he did, like he's no, just giving no, the cold no, shoulder. No. no, this isn't a son of Sam situation. No, I have not been sitting near the pipe for that long. <laughs> okay, the other issue though is that the crab is paying for the cigarettes with our money. Oh, <laughs> well, we can uh, figure that out at least. Yeah, we we call it buy me a coffee. Really, it's bought buy me a a cigarette for the crab. And you know, those things aren't cheap these days, and thanks to Joe Biden. Uh, yeah. thanks, bo- thanks, Joe. And our good friend, Eddie. Joe. Good friend, Eddie, who would uh, give out cigarettes for free. He's gone. I think he went to jail or something. Yeah. And our friend, Lucy, who would give out free Eddie's for free. <laughs> yeah, things have really changed. To. So, Kia, you didn't watch anything this week? Um, oh yeah, <laughs> you just stared at a wall in your free time. Yeah, I stared at a wall. All right. Uh, I watched a movie, if you want to call it that. Oh, okay, I will. Uh, it's called Damsel. Oh. And it's a it's a Netflix fantasy movie. They're get, they're trying to get it on the fantasy stuff. Stars the lady from Stranger Things, Millie Bobby Brown. And she, uh, yeah. she's, uh, she gets tricked into marrying into this royal family that sacrifices the wives to dragons. And then she ends up having to escape from this dragon. Uh, in case. So it's sort of like Shogun, except with a dragon. Instead of killing people for saving face. Sure. Um, the stuff where she is like in this weird cave and trying to escape from a dragon that's slowly stalking her is the coolest part of the movie. It is unfortunately a third of the movie. That's a two and a half. Not for just me. the whole thing. Everything else is bad. Um, the dragon is cool when it's just like shit talking, being like I'm gonna do <laughs> stuff, and it's like. Uh, not seen. The moment that dragon is seen in full, that CGI is not holding up. Yikers. Um, they had one job. And everything everything that happens outside of the cave with like this weird political intrigue stuff, it does, I don't care. It's not good. I want to give me the, the whole movie should have just been her trying to escape this dragon in a cave and it's like a close quarters type of thing you don't have to you don't have to show me all this fake cgi that you plopped onto your screen but instead they you know and they had to appeal to the four quadrants i guess like only one co- only one quadrant likes that kind of movie so they have to appeal to all four by including other stuff oh is Steve is swan to talk about his four quadrants theory <laughs> yeah yes he is <laughs> Yeah, well, the the four quadrants of uh, of movies you appeal to, uh, I believe it's males, oh, um, eighteen to forty nine. Oh, and then males outside of that demographic, and then females, eighteen to forty. That's the old theory. I don't know what if they've ever. Yeah, this is it. Swanson. You and your fringe crazy concepts. Yeah, your friend Doctor Thaddeus Bronson. <laughs> Doctor Thaddeus Bronson Have is we a talked about him? TV. <laughs> I don't uh, think we've engineer. talked about if we've talked about him. I don't think it's been it's probably been like two hundred episodes. Well, it hasn't been. Yeah, I guess. So never mind. Hasn't been two hundred episodes <laughs> of this pod. So yeah, Doctor um, Thaddeus Bronson, the progenitor of all <laughs> quadrant theories. Yeah, there was never anything relating to quadrants before or after. 
Anyway, it's a two now. Very sad, Swanson. Very sad. Um, that's it for me. And that's it for this segment. Let's get to the news, huh? You guys remember Baywatch? No. There'd be like ladies in like red swimsuits. Like I oh, remember, yeah. I remember there was an episode where they teamed up with WCW, but the B plot was about a lady recovering from sexual assault. It doesn't that sound like a? Fun I do time. vaguely remember them teaming up with WCW. <laughs> Hulk Hogan's there, right? Yeah, and they're training for the Mr. big T. show. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I think it yeah. was uh, Rick. Fl- no, it wasn't Mr. T. Um. Well, also they had their own sort of the Hulk Hogan also had his own sort of show that was like Baywatch called Thunder Down Under. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Um, which I think I believe he filmed in between being in WWE and going to WCW. Uh, anyway, Baywatch, of course, was a hit in the nineties. Mainly because of for set two women reasons and swimsuits, uh, but now two it's big back. reasons. Yeah, Pamela Anderson's. Big <laughs> <reasons are. laughs> yeah, uh-huh. there were others, but it was Pamela. There Anderson were other females. Made. Yeah, and it was David Hasselhoff who brought the the other half, I guess. Guys, can I say something that, controversial? Listen, Baywatch. That's a four quadrant show right there. <laughs> I think it's a one quadrant show. It's very much a one quadrant. It's show, a quad- <laughs> yeah, the one quadrant being people who enjoy the beach. Yeah, but uh, did you guys know that Baywatch Nights was a thing where it was oh, a yeah. science fiction spinoff? <laughs> cool. of wait, 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 wait! It wasn't just at nighttime. It was <laughs> well, had, like, yeah, aliens. because that'd be irresponsible if people were at the beach at nighttime swimming. Yeah, I believe it. It was originally just a spinoff, but then it turned into a sci-fi show. <laughs> Okay, so is it aliens? Uh, I don't know the specifics, I, I, uh, but I just know that at some point, I, yes, I believe there is like some sort of alien related. They were, trying like to, a... they were trying to cash in on like the X Files being very big. <laughs> is there like a sexy alien in a swimsuit? I hope or... so. Maybe a robot. A sexy robot. A sexy robot that can't get in the water because it's a robot. Okay, so season. T- Two, episode so one, for the- Terror of the Deep. Mitch and Griff investigate a sunken freighter that a woman claims was sunk by a New Guinea sea monster. Episode two, The Creature. Mitch and Griff and Ryan investigate a series of murders committed by a half-human, half-fish woman intent on having a baby. <laughs> oh, no. What? <laughs> okay, so the first uh, season know- was just regular, regular, regular sort of... A Baywatch yes. ripoff or season, season one, episode one. Mitch, my, Mitch Buchanan and the Gardner Albo, you become private investigators for a drive detective agency above a nightclub. Their first job is to protect a fashion model who claims she's being stalked by a madman. Mitch Buchanan being uh, David Hasselhoff's character from Baywatch. Yes, of course. Who could forget? Uh, and then in the second season, they they shifted to a sci fi show. <laughs> To, to try and make up for the ratings. Uh, needless to say, this new reboot, uh, there's a new reboot coming for Baywatch, and it will not be Baywatch Nights related, I don't think. Um, but yeah, the new the new Baywatch is another is going to be back at Fox, which I believe the first season of Baywatch was. Um. There's no specific de- details regarding the premise, but I mean, the premise is there's beach and people are running on it, right? That's like there that's better it. be, but I don't think I don't you think can allow. I don't think the woke mob will allow there to be beautiful, bodacious babes on the beach side. Yeah, I bounding think, towards uh, the camera. I think our woke values have ruined uh, boobs and butts. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Zoomers. No hate one cares to... about boobs and butts anymore, right, folks? Wait, I thought the Wokies were sexually depraved cretins who. Yeah, but they also want destroy wanna... all Christian values. No, they Keo, also... don't you know Gen Z is having less sex than before, previous generations. 
they so absolutely clearly they are... don't care about anything regarding boobs and butts and <laughs> uh, muscles. They're absolutely not a bunch of porn brain freaks <laughs> <laughs> who had their minds rotted by Roblox natural disaster survival twenty four seven. Um. Yeah, it's hard to say. Anyway, the Fox is hoping that the new Baywatch will fare better than that movie that The Rock did. Which one? Uh, that was called Baywatch. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh. Interesting. The question is, um, will, the te- will the swimsuits be even more scandalous than the 90s version? I mean, the yeah, 90s ones old- weren't even that. They were all just wearing one pieces. Yeah, but by the 90s standard, that was pretty crazy because it showed off their curves. I guess that's true, yeah. What if so they're just wearing want... full skin suits? <laughs> I was thinking like a sling bikini, but okay. They're all just wearing, yeah. They're maybe all just uh, maybe full... my bra- <laughs> Who's Whose brain is more rotted by pornography? Me or Swanson? Email us to let us know. <laughs> yeah, there can only be one. I'm I'm not in the contention here. <laughs> no, you're, you're no, you're re- you're responsible. Yeah, yes, I am. Your consumption is normal. Unlike you uh, guys. Good news, good news over in CBS Land, folks. Tracker's oh. coming back for season two. <laughs> How? He's back, baby. How? I think, I think Mima and Peepaw were really into Tracker. Yeah, it turns out pulling around 6 million viewers a week is still pretty good for CBS, so. Fuck. Tracker's coming back. Lesbian moms everywhere, watch out. Your representation is here. (laughs) Did they say what you'll be searching for this season? I guess it's too early for that since, (laughs) never mind. Yeah, this season hasn't even ended yet. Um, Yeah, for all we know, Hunter is still out there. Or Seeker. (laughs) Seeker, yeah. uh, uh, Presumably Seeker will be involved in this this new new season of the show. Do you think the show will end like Justified, but with Tracker and Seeker? Oh, we could only hope. (laughs) For the sake of the show. Um, apparently, uh, Seeker's mother has a more Find expanded her. role. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has a more expanded role. Also, there was an IT guy. Did I miss the IT guy? Uh, the IT guy was a guy with no legs, right? Oh, yeah. He was like briefly in, yeah, he had like one scene. Yeah. It was hard on that show to keep track of everybody because they couldn't be face to face ever. <laughs> anyway, Tracker uh, lives to track another day. That's yeah, insane. Clocker. I look forward to forgetting that this show has uh, has existed, and then four years from now saying, "Oh yeah, Tracker's on its sixth season. It's going on season six. Yeah, I everyone, can definitely see that. All of us being sad and confused on how it could happen how it could last but is he but is he gonna become an an item but are he and searcher gonna get together before the series ends they're yeah they'll probably wait they have to drag it out a bit i think they're not gonna just do it right away you know ruin the the chemistry that they've already built up um i'm curious actually so i was doing a little bit of looking around and uh, so I looked at some old uh, shows that we watched back in the early days of the podcast to see if they were still on the air. This is actually oh, well, sort of a prime example of what I was talking about. You guys remember The Neighborhood? <laughs> yes. Welcome um, to The Hood, you... yo. Welcome to The Hood, yo. It's The Neighborhood. <laughs> I'm trying to forget about that. You guys are reminding me. And I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm starting Not to Not only is it currently right on season six. <laughs> It has hit a hundred episodes. That no, show taught me that to... apparently it's not normal for white people to use a washcloth in the shower. Sort of like Shogun, when you think about it. <laughs> not a normal thing, apparently, but 
Yeah, that's uh, that show has, has been on the entire time that we've been on the air. I can't believe this. I'm a, I'm like I'm shook. I'm shook, folks. Folks, listen, it's true. You guys might not think about it, but it's true. It's out there. Um, I don't have any other prime examples ready to go. That was. I think I that would that all oh, that can just be a one and done. We just need that one example to remind us all that. Uh, time is a flat circle. <laughs> um. Anyway, I'm calling the police. I, I want to. I look. We're doing a tense police standoff now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Kevin can fuck himself. Ended after two seasons. Smart. Uh, I I will say the. You guys remember Evil? This one I might be a little, <laughs> a little harder to remember. Oh, I had, uh, Luke evil. Cage. As uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, fourth yeah. and final season is premiering uh, soon. Wow. In May. What is going mm- on? Man, nothing we've done mattered. Yeah. Now, the, to be fair, these CBS shows seem to be the only ones that stick around for a long time. Uh, other old timers that I remember, like, tell me a story. <laughs> that ended a while, a long time ago. Or, uh, you guys remember Prodigal Son? No. That one ah. ended a while. I think that one end- lasted two seasons. The point I'm making here, and why the tracker renewal is news that is just fun to talk about, but not really insightful in any way, is that broadcast TV is a hellscape where there's very little uh, worth watching. And things get renewed almost because of inertia than anything else. The end. <laughs> Folks, we're miserable. Uh, we're in hell. Speaking, <laughs> Please hey, kill speaking us. Speaking of things, speaking of things getting renewed despite long being past their sell by date, Tim Allen. Huh? He's back. Oh, what's That's he doing? Right. Tim Allen is partnering up with his old pals at ABC to do a third sitcom called Shifting Gears. Oh, what's that about? Is he like a car guy now? Huh? Pretty much. Hey, yeah. I'm a car too, you know. Hey, the one thing I know is that cars don't rat themselves, rat their friends out to the police. <laughs> anyway, uh, the series shifting gears is going to revolve around Matt, shockingly not named Tim, which I believe his other two characters were. Well, he's really stepping out of his comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, stepping out of his comfort zone. They're going to say, I don't think so, Matt? Wow. I don't know how I feel about that. So he's stubborn, what else? He's a stubborn... <laughs> That's pretty much going to be it, I think. <laughs> he's a stubborn, widowed owner of a classic car restoration shop. So no wife. Wow, perhaps he's really the, like going to the new territory here. Perhaps the insane. execs, uh, the TV execs have decided that Tim Allen's too old for wife. Now he must be, have, now he must be widowed. <laughs> the wife's dead, Tim. <laughs> he, he, looks genu- dead, Tim. He, he looks genuinely distraught, like he actually lost his wife. As the execs are telling him this. Um, instead, uh, the plot thickens. This is what the copy says, anyway. When Matt's daughter, with whom he's estranged, moves into his house alongside her teenage kids. Now, you might ask yourself, I'm just reading this, if they're uh-huh. estranged. Why is she moving into his house? Well, I guess that's just the wacky thing. We're going to have to find out when we watch this. They got unex- unex- estranged there. They, they're they no longer estranged. Her husband anyway, they're gonna... a millennial husband was eating too many avocados and died. <laughs> <laughs> that would almost be funny. <laughs> Tragic Tide Pod accident. <laughs> Yeah, he, and, he and accidentally Tim Allen could be like, back in my day, we took fun drugs like cocaine. Uh, uh, uh. No, it, it was actually a laundry incident involving Tide, tide Pods. He, they put in like 10 Tide Pods into the washer and it exploded. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Bart's prank in the sim- sims when he shakes the can. Like, 
anyway, this is an exciting new direction for Tim Allen where he'll be playing uh, outside of his comfort zone, as we've all said. Unlike on his uh, previous, his most recent role, which was in Disney's TV show, The Santa Clauses, where he was just playing Santa Claus. We all wish him the best. I don't. Oh, we all wish him death. I hope he fucking fails. <laughs> he won't. Like I said, inertia. This is a broadcast TV motto. Anyway, uh, shifting gears, let's get to another segment, huh? Because that's it for the news. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm ready for a segment. What's What segment are we doing? Well, it's a segment near and dear to everyone's hearts. One that I haven't done in a while, and I think it's time to bring it back. It's Guess Who's Coming. Hit the theme. Stare. All right, so... Yeah, it's Guess Who's Coming with host Kioran. So Guess Who's Coming is a fan favorite of the show. What we're going to do is talk about shows that are coming up in television. I'm going to only give the title of the show... And my True. two co-hosts here are going to guess what the show is about. Mm-hmm. And whoever gets closer right. to the description wins a point. Yeah, huh? The show's making its grand return. This uh, segment's making its grand return, by the way. We haven't played this since July. Yeah, yeah. yeah we didn't do it in solidarity with a strike. Is that right? <laughs> and then we just... I forgot about it for a couple months. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, you guys ready? Because I've got the shows right here. I'm going to start saying them, and you, you guys are going to be very happy to hear these show titles. You're going to think of a lot of ideas what they're about. Okay, I'm happy. I'm All opening right, my third eye. Here we go, guys. The first show, this is a Hulu program, uh, and it's called okay. Davy and Jonesy's Locker. <laughs> okay. Oh. Who's going first? So it's a hi- All right, so uh, it's a high school, but for pirates. <laughs> Is that all? What else you got? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's two brothers, um, Davy and Jonesy. Oh, okay. Stare, stare hit on something there, and I think I'm going to go in another direction, which is that Davy and Jonesy are uh, friends of the opposite sex. Ooh. Um, they're teenagers, high school students probably, and um, they share a locker. <laughs> Again, <laughs> oh, that leads to bold. lots that's... of wacky hijinks because... Okay. Uh, they have to get their books at different times. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Davy and Jonesy's Locker. The original series follows Davy and Jonesy, two lovably eccentric best friends who have always felt Ooh. out of step with their peers and the banal backdrop of their high school existence. So, when they discover their locker is actually a portal to the multiverse. They're more than ready to escape their teenage prison of mediocrity in favor of New Horizons. But joke is on them when they only end up in bizarre alternate versions of their high school, surrounded by offbeat versions of their classmates. Fortunately, these audacious and creative besties are ready to make the most of this vacation from reality by leaving their mark on every universe they visit, even even if it means choosing interdimensional chaos while they're at it. Uh, Looking right. for the vibes... Okay, well, that sounds like they're pirates in the One Piece sense. Like they're living Luffy's dream. Hmm, interesting. Being... So who, who, what, what are you saying, Swanson? Who gets the points, Swanson? Who, who I get the point. Win? No, no, no hold on. <laughs> hey, so hey, they're, they're, Kyo, it's you. It's two girls. It's two girls, not opposite gender, so there's, there's probably but not they, any of that. They I do think, share I think a locker. being a pirate is more important than being a gender. Hold on, uh, so it seems like they share a locker. They do it sounds like. share a locker. It says their locker, so they are sharing a locker. There's no, okay. they're not well, that pirates. Was a, that was a, essential. That was essential to my premise. Yes, there. Unfortunately, Swanson, I think, got closer here. They're friends, and no, on top no. of that, come on now, they're sharing Come on a locker. now, they're, they're traveling the seas of the cosmic filament, <laughs> of but the ocean of endless possibilities. You said it was high school for pirates. You didn't say anything about going to adventures. <laughs> come on. 
Hey, man, I'm your friend. Swanson gets the point. <laughs> hey, man, I'm your friend. <laughs> oh, you're my friend. Are you holding me a gunpoint and telling me this? <laughs> we used to dig I'm coal together. Friend. What's next? All right. Uh, next up, let's see. We're on the Oxygen Network, and the program oh, is called... No. Oh, my. <laughs> Forgot that I don't know what that is. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's the channel for women. It's okay. Yeah, it's the channel for women that's not Lifetime. Yeah, that, that is this, a name I haven't heard in a long time. This one's called Kill or Be Killed. <laughs> okay, so this is about a woman in an abusive that's about marriage. A woman. Okay. In an abusive marriage who has to kill her husband. But he's the world's greatest assassin. <laughs> Wow, that sounds like a really excellent program. <laughs> it it kind of reminds me of that anime about the... the uh, <laughs> what? About the kids who have to kill their teacher. Who's like <laughs> the Yeah, well, that, well, that's different. He's not an assassin. That's true, but he's like really good at fighting assassins. Swanson, well, what's, your, what's your take? Well, the thing is, he's like as powerful as Perfect Cell. Yeah. Swanson, what's your take? It's about a single lady who thinks she's found the perfect man until it turns out that he is a serial killer. Okay. And she's like, whoops, guess I got to do something about that. All right. Uh, killer Be Killed is the gripping exploration of self-defense murder cases where law uh... enforcement, prosecutors, and defense attorneys unravel every detail from the harrowing stories forensics, interrogations, and witness statements that led up to the gruesome event in order to find answers. Do the oh, investigation I should have known this wouldn't be an actual... <laughs> wow, be some reality like, stuff. This is just like the first episode of Justified. Sparring of dynamic legal teams, every episode provides an immersive journey exploring both sides of the story, building to confounding verdicts of guilt or innocence in the eyes of the law. The series also exposes the suspenseful journey loved ones of both the slain and the perpetrators take as they navigate the twists and turns of the investigation and are forced to grapple with the truth. Now, I think just by default, Swanson takes this one. Oh. Hey, hey, mine difficult. actually had mine actually had the woman committing killings. Swanson is just like, oh, here's a weird situation to be in. Yeah, that could also be the premise for a show, though. <laughs> but it's not. It's not. We just heard what the premise is. It, so it yours, yours was a lot more fantastical and specific than Swanson's, though. But mine was about killing, about wives killing their husbands. I mean, this wasn't necessarily about that at all. I mean, it's pretty clear. I mean, it's on the Oxygen Network. I, I mean, you look. I have a feeling a little bit of se of sexism going on here. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, you're making. The way you made it sound was that the they're they're not killing them out of self defense. These are about self defense murders. <laughs> well, she has to kill him, Swanson. Why is he going to assassinate <laughs> her? He's a world class assassin. Oh no, she's just he's just abusive. Oh well, hmm. that's not really self defense. That's like that's not not I quite. Self -defense. I mean, I mean, like if it happened, like. When, like, at, at the moment of being abused, but if it's like she's not happy with the relationship and she could leave but decides to kill him, that's not self defense. True. Also, so Stare, you know, I'm not going to interrogate if... your premise too much, but there's not much of a show there if he just <laughs> is an abusive guy and then she's trying to kill him, but also he's an assassin, so I guess he's also gonna be really hard good to at kill. not getting killed. <laughs> like, yeah. he's so good at, at being an assassin that he knows how to not get killed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> oh, a woman dating a serial killer, that's kind of boring, isn't it? That's been done. Yeah, that's right. I was going with boring because it was the Oxygen Network. Uh, more, more casual oh, so sexism. you think content for women is boring, huh, Swanson? Yeah. No, it's basic I mean, cable. Yeah, it's, it is just, kill it's, this man. I think it is just the network being bad rather than you guys There's being There's a reason sexist. that we've never watched a show on the Oxygen Network. It's because they don't make them. They make this reality shit. I didn't, even know, Oxygen. Us. I didn't <laughs> even know Oxygen was still around. I didn't know it existed. Yeah, actually, me either. <laughs> this is a huge shock. I gotta rethink a lot of things, guys. Can we put this game on hold? Mm. <laughs> 
Oh, you mean so I can win? Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. What's next, Keo? Wait, no, no, you gotta say who gets the point, Keo. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, you, you guys are confusing me. I don't know who gets the point on that one. Uh, well, then we... I get the point. You know, what? If getting... how does if... that work? <laughs> because if Keo can't make up his mind, someone else has to. And <laughs> it's I gonna be took you. The initiative, yes. Because That's why Keo is the a... un... the Keo is supposed to be the unbiased third party. I, I it's think not Sta- my fault I... you were too much of a beta male cut to speak up for yourself. I think Stairmaster gets the point because his <laughs> premise was at least adjacent to the idea of a self defense <laughs> murder. That is true. So, you know, it's, it's fair enough. Tight game. Swanton is tangential at best. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tangential my nuts to your face. Whoa. I'll send your cosent at gunpoint, my man. Oh. Do it. But after the game. <laughs> That's going to be the prize if you win. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, What's next? I'm gonna say this one, hoping that you guys don't already know what this is because I've never heard of it, but you might, you guys might have. Anyway, this is an Apple <laughs> Apple TV Plus program, mm. and it's called The Completely Made Up Adventures of Dick Turpin. <laughs> I feel hmm. like I should know this one. I know the name Dick Turpin. I don't know Fuck. from what though. Well, what's it about? Fuck. What is what is he up to? Come on. Okay, so this is about a guy who's a pathological liar. Uh-huh. But all the lies he ke- he tells inadvertently end up coming true. And each week he solves a different crime. Okay. Or rights or wrong of some kind. Swanson? Uh, Dick Turpin is a little guy. A little English guy, let's say. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, don't say little guy. That's... That's cheating. A little English guy. No. And um, he's going around the countryside of England. And he's doing, he's like helping people. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe he rides a horse. He probably, <laughs> okay. probably does that. Swanson is just like really flailing at, at this point. No, maybe he rides a horse. <laughs> He probably rides a horse. He probably goes around and he helps some people. Uh, I want to say I'm gonna I'm gonna pick something definitive here. I'm gonna say that the timeline is 1800s England. Hmm. Okay. Swanson's picking a time period. Stairmaster, I'm gonna give you a chance to pick a time period. What era does this? I think yours is sounded pretty modern, right? Like yeah, 2025. Current. All right. Here we go. Uh, Dick Turpin sets out on a journey of wildly absurd escapades when he's made the reluctant leader of a band of outlaws and tasked with the outwitting corrupt law... Oh, sorry. Co- and tasked with outwitting corrupt lawmen and self-appointed thief-taker Jonathan Wilde. Oh. In this irreverent retelling set in the 18th century, Turpin uh. is the most famous but least likely of highway yeah. robbers whose success is defined mostly by his charm, showmanship, and great hair. Together with his gang of lovable rogues, Turpin rides the highs and lows of his new endeavors, including a brush with celebrity, all whilst trying to escape the clutches of the thief-taker. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Swanson just described the guy in his premise as a little guy. <laughs> well, at least, yeah, well, a little guy English is, guy. I described my guy as an unlikely hero. Okay. Well, why don't you finish the premise and then we'll decide. That was the. That You're already was the defending premise. yourself just because I yeah, said 18th the, century. The, the, the Q, Q's done. Technically, I think so, you, you were a, a century I think off. I'm closer. But Sarah is even further off for the time period. Maybe. <laughs> I did say English guy. Is he little? Um, doesn't really say so, if he's big or not. He yeah, but sound... I did describe my guy as an unlikely hero. Okay, does you he also ride a horse? Had a, you also, I don't hear anything about, oh, there is a, I think Swanson knows who this figure is, because, yeah, he, 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 he all the pictures are, he has a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I just assume that an English guy in the 1800s is riding a horse. Yeah, I think Swanson, like, somewhere in your brain, you're aware of this, this, this figure. I think <laughs> Swanson's probably seen him in a dream. 
I'm pretty sure the only reason I know Dick Turpin is that they probably made a joke about it on Monty Python once or twice. So yeah, Swanson. I think it's an English thing. That's probably why I. <laughs> Swanson gets the point. Hold on, he... well, come on. So hey. you, your, your premise was that he had some kind of like, like Mara. mind mind powers where he's able to. No, no, manifest. no! It's just a coincidence that all of his pathological lies end up turning out true, and it helps. As usual, Stare's premise is good. Stare has a good premise for like a good show. Okay, I but don't think that he's show. even a... He's not a hero in this program. He's just... I think he's a criminal. <laughs> so no, no, he's he's an outlaw, but he's a... So is Robin Hood. It doesn't say he's doing anything good. He, it's saying he's just trying not to get caught. Yeah, by the police. I, oh, I guess he is a corrupt lawman, so you're... Mm, mm. I think that, ma- I think that <laughs> makes him like, a, like, an, like maybe an anti-hero at best. He's like Shadow the Hedgehog. Okay, but he but Swan <laughs> but he's on a horse. Oh yeah, yeah. horses are like jet skates. <laughs> hmm. Disagree. I mean, I mean, I mean, Shadow rides a motorcycle. Okay, and that's it's a mechanical horse. Hmm. And I mean, Gun Commander is basically like a corrupt lawman. All right, look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a final chance here, Stairmaster. <laughs> what we're gonna do here is we're gonna decide who gets the point by doing another show. What? Wait. So <laughs> the show. So what? <laughs> I'm the host. Okay. Here. I'm the host. Okay. Here. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so the last show here. This is a Disney Plus original. And it's called Renegade Nell. Oh, this is a spinoff of Bleach. Oh. <laughs> about about the former <laughs> Tres Espada. Nell right, Swan- Swanson, gets the, Swanson gets the point. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say anything, though. <laughs> Alright, all right, Swanson, say say a single word. Um, Swanson gets the point. He's a lady said, named uh, Nell. <laughs> okay, lady named Nell, go on. Um, she's English, and she is. Uh, she's run. She's on the run. She's on the run from the the uh, some forces. I'm gonna say. Listen, I'm gonna do time period again. I'm gonna say this is. Uh, let's see. I was off a century last time. So after this is, the thousand year blood war. Uh, this is 18th century. This time, and she so, is uh, on the run from the so police. Barry Lyndon. Very Lyndon times. An old, an old London time. And oh, she's, you already had she's the point. Horse. You already had the point, Swanson. You don't need to give me the exact premise somehow. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Renegade Nell, England, 1705. Framed for murder and on the run with her sisters, Nell Jackson turns her hand to highway robbery to survive. Aided by her superpowered sidekick. Wait, what? A plucky little sprite named Billy okay, Blonde. Okay, well, I didn't guess that. <laughs> <laughs> now realizes that fate has put her on the wrong side of the law for a reason. A reason much bigger than she could have imagined. To defeat the magical plot against the Queen of England. Okay, that took a turn. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, uh, so I got the part okay, before so the twist. Lingers. Okay, so the so Bleach is a, is a quasi-magical world. Oh, okay. You gonna argue for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Swanson gets the point. Swanson wins, and yeah, I think they should make. I think they should have made a spinoff about now. Sounds like I've become the Shogun. <laughs> Is that how this works? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Swanson. Crown what are you me. gonna? Now that you're the Shogun, what is Stairmaster's punishment for losing? Stairmaster must. Wait, wait, wait. What about the? If you kill me, you don't get the reward. I'm not killing you. Oh, okay. You gotta just shave his head and you make him take a bath. We, 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 yeah. <laughs> we, I need you for the podcast, and also you're my friend, I guess. Yay! Uh, you must go throw butter in the boiler room. All right, I'll try. Okay. Wear something over your face or something. Wear, wear some. That's a good gear. idea. I'm gonna go get a welding helmet. I mean, don't do it right now. You just do it later after the pod. Okay. 
Um, all right. Well, that's thanks, Keo. That was a great round. Yeah, thank you. Fans are, I'm sure fans are hooting and hollering the entire time we played. And they're reassured of the integrity of their our institutions. Yeah, this yes. was not rigged. I was not feeding Swanson any information throughout that process. Yeah, no collusion. <laughs> yeah, there there is um, no quid pro quo. And now all that's left is for us to talk about our main event. Swanson, where's the cigarettes you promised me? Uh, well, the crab took them. My God. Take it up with him. How am I going to make it to the rest of the recording without my cigs, man? Uh, I don't know. We we're going to have to find a way because we're talking about Shogun. Oh, what's Shogun that? Shogun follows the collision of two ambitious men from different worlds in a mysterious woman samurai. John Blackthorne, a risk-taking English sailor who ends up shipwrecked in Japan, a land unfamiliar to him. Lord Tora- uh, Toranaga, a shrewd, powerful daimyo. Uh, at odds with his own dangerous political rivals and Lady Mariko, a woman of invaluable skill but dishonorable family ties, who must prove her value valuable. Uh, huh, huh? Who must prove her value and allegiance? Uh, Shogun is based off of a classic, quote unquote, novel, uh, and has actually a remake of a- <laughs> another 1980s miniseries. Uh, Which was did Shogun take you to a faraway land and show you a different way of looking at the world, or did it uh, slice you down? <laughs> well, we should talk. Do well, we want to talk a little bit about the original Shogun and how influential that was? Yeah, it was like a big deal back in. It, so the original series from 1980. Based was, off of a novel from 1975. Um, yeah, both it was kind of sort of like... And, ha- yeah. Yeah, it was sort of like the precursor to Japanese stuff showing up. Like all those ninja yeah, movies are basically sort of like built the first, upon that. It's like the first big like TV event that's revolved around like Japanese mm-hmm. stuff. Like it is, as far as, I rem- as, far as I've heard from... Uh, people about the show. It is very Eurocentric <laughs> compared to this oh, yeah, one. Well, that's, oh yeah, the original had cut out a lot of the politics to focus more on the British guy's plot line. Um, but it was also yeah. a big, it was also a huge event. The first episode was three hours long. It was witnessed by 23 million people in America. Oh, Lord. And it broke several milestones. It was the first network show to use the word piss in dialogue and actually show piss. Oh. Like the, oh, yeah. with a combination or or what do you mean? Like or do they oh, do no. both? Uh, yeah, they piss on camera. I'm saying they only also, did both say the word and show it? Yes. Or? So so some shows have oh, shown shit. it and but they didn't say the word. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and also first oh, beheading on the network television. Lord Toranaga in the original was played by uh, Toshiro Toshiro (laughs) Miyafune. Holy shit. That's the guy from all the Kurosawa films. That's Mr. Yojimbo. Yeah, Mr. Yojimbo. He's from Seven Samurai. Rashomon. He's an acclaimed actor in Japan. He's like, he's like the, he's basically the Japanese John Wayne, except way cooler. Well, yeah. He's pretty much one of the greatest to ever do it. Yes. And also, you get it was a legend. And also, men were seen wearing fudunashis. Food. Oh. <laughs> um. Anyway, people in Japan hated it. <laughs> well, yeah, because the Japanese <laughs> characters weren't featured, right? Well, they weren't because it was as much. Because it was seen as frivolous and trivial and kind of racist. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's no good. 
Um, yeah, the TV miniseries isn't really a thing anymore, but back in the, the era of Shogun, this was like... Well... They were always like big deals. Is this not a mini... You, yeah, yeah, you're right. You figure I mean, this like is Roots also a miniseries. was like a big deal back in this time? Yeah, they also had Stephen King's stand. Yeah, that was a big one. Like, from about the late 70s to, like, the mid-90s, late 90s, maybe, TV miniseries were, like, always appointment. And also made-for-TV movies were a big deal. You know, you had Columbo. Yeah. Who could forget uh, Atomic Train? (laughs) Classic of the genre. After that, there was nowhere to go but down. Yeah. They should remake that. FX, get on it. And they should get the guy playing Blackthorn. To play, uh... Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Uh, his name... By the way, Fuck. you guys you guys cannot pick his name out of a lineup. <laughs> no, oh, because you know, I guess, guess, I guarantee you, you can't guess his name. Unless they I, looked it up. I'm not gonna contend with that, Swanson. I saw that news story about how he used to have a weirder voice for the character, and I still don't remember the actor's name. Cosmo Jarvis. <laughs> yeah! I think he's also a Spaniard. Uh, he's British, but may, I mean, oh. he might be Spanish. He oh, might have some Spanish the... blood in him. Um, but yeah, he um, he's not really been in anything that I know of to say. Um, what do we think of his, of our John Blackthorn here, Mister Cosmo? <laughs> I think he's pretty good. I think he does yeah. a good job being the sort of shitty. Well, he's kind of a heel this episode, but he does yeah. it good. <laughs> and he does it well. Um, yeah, he does a good job, I think. I think the fact his voice is so strange kind of lends to him being this weird alien element. Yeah. That nobody yeah, can I, understand. I think it's weirder that he's English and he's he is in real life British and he has... <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do you think this is his actual voice? No, but there are British people who sound like that. Hmm. And they all um, tend to enjoy succulent Chinese meals. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the law doesn't. Yeah, we open up with um, this ship of dying people. <laughs> Just this dead man's ship. And uh, that's when we enter, we, we see our, our guy, Blackthorn. Uh, he's speaking. He's a pilot. He's speaking with the he, captain. Hey, listen, we're gonna reach land soon, and the captain's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm no, be dead by then." <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, buddy. Like, we're all gonna be dead. Say we're out of water, you, bro. Uh, we have why no you water, kill yourself, bro. <laughs> he's like, why don't you kill yourself? Do yourself the favor. And he's like, actually, why don't you do it first? And hands him a gun. Goes out. He's like, you okay. Hear it, go off off screen. <laughs> it's like that's a coward's way out. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure Q, this doesn't come back at the end of the episode for him to examine. No, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, so um, that guy blows his brains out. And everyone succumbs to scur- passes out from scurvy and malnourishment. Yeah. Q, Japanese farmer man. Who's just walking around in the morning. Yeah, Christian, sees this Japanese ship. farmer man. Oh, yeah, yeah. He sees this ship, and listen, uh, I know ships weren't, like, completely uncommon, but if I saw a giant but, ship well, like a... that... Well, yeah, Japan was basically cut off from European trade, since the Spanish had a monopoly on it. Yeah, well, if I saw a ship like <laughs> yeah. that, regardless, like, the look of it, I'd be, I'd shit my pants. I'd think I was being haunted. Um, Obviously, we see the Japanese that... boats in this... Boats and ships, and they're nowhere near as huge. Yeah, they're yeah. Um, Which was a factor of uh, the wood they had access to in Japan at the time. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one thing I really like about this show is the the scale of it feels. Uh, a lot of times, shows, uh, mostly streaming programs, try to do scale with uh, CGI and it doesn't work. And I don't know, there's a blend of it here, and I think the blend really works well. I allow it. Stuff stuff feels real. I will abide by this show's special effects. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, It also just feels like a lot of it is taking place on actual well-designed 
sets and not just like here's a here's a sound stage mm-hmm. go wild um but yeah so the the ja- the japanese arrive the soldiers and they're like yeah i don't know what's going on with these guys but they're dead except for this one they do not have a, a good protocol others. for dealing with with this situation they they have no idea what they're doing so, the one guy seems a little surprised when he sees the guy and he's not uh japanese <laughs> like what are they (laughs) um so yeah they uh we cut to uh this is when we get introduced to our our friend my friend and yours uh lord tornaga um he's one of the five lords who have uh taken to ruling the the uh ruling japan now they're the five regents Yes, that's right. They're not. I guess they're not technically lords. But it's a little bit strange because they're regents for the previous regent's son. They don't mention the emperor at all in this. Who didn't hold power during this time period, but still was the emperor. Hmm. Something Something to think about. Perhaps they don't care about the emperor. Or maybe the Emperor will come up. Perhaps they care about the Shogun (laughs) that they don't have right now. Yes, see, it's Shogunless, and the show is called Shogun, so that gives you a sort of clue as to what the goal is here. The guy they called Taiko is a stand-in for uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who was the second great unifier of Japan, who was born a farmer, but ended up like the supreme military leader. Goals. And you find all the boring states. Goals. Yeah. But he never actually got the title of Shogun because he was of peasant origin. Dang. See how they keep you down. Yeah, they played they played him real dirty there, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Literally you can unite the entire country and you still don't get Just give him the title. This... Come on. Come on, Japan. What are you doing? Anyways, yeah, he made he made his son a successor, but he died a bit too early. And then there was a Regency Council, as we see in the show. And just like in the show, in real life, there was some political struggle. Yeah, this Regency Council is um, not headed, but is uh, has a member, uh, Ishido, who is the mm, biggest Ishi- player hater I've seen in ages. <laughs> guy this guy hates this guy from the moment that uh toronaga steps foot into the 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 council room this guy is like ready to go this guy's like glad glad for you to join us kind of attitude yeah well he's toronaga has the largest fiefdom of the four lord of the five lords and he's from house uh minonora which is a stand-in for house minamoto which for the past 400 years up to that point had held every shogunate that happened. So I guess they have So some yeah, it, it's to be very wary. much a political threat to the rest of them. Yeah. Um they mention uh and also in a flashback later in the show. Uh, another great thing that this show does that other shows fail to do is that it incorporates the flashbacks in ways that I feel like mm-hmm. work for the flow of the show. And aren't just they don't, like they don't feel like I'm waiting for them to be over. Yeah, they're not just dragging the show down or out. Um, yeah, uh, it's mentioned in another flashback. I think Toronto is talking to his mother. Uh-huh. Um, and that he's a member of a powerful family in Japan. Yeah, and uh, that's the moment where we know that he's a good guy because he, uh, <laughs> they, she says that he should be the shogun. He's like, I don't want that title. Unless he's lying, of course. Well, we don't have any reason to believe he's not. <laughs> everyone just, else who's everyone else who's despicable shows it pretty quickly in this show. Have you heard of the uh, Thirteen Commanderies? It was a title in China that you were not supposed to accept if it was offered to show your good character, because everyone who did take the title ended up being like corrupt rulers who yeah, threatened I mean, the mandate sense. of heaven. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so I think he might just. (laughs) He might be playing the part a little bit. 
downplaying well, his we'll ambition. Find out, won't we? <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, um, meanwhile, our friend, uh, Mr. Blackthorn is, he's going through it. Listen, um, <laughs> he's having a heated gamer moment <laughs> oh, that's, that goes on for the next 40 minutes, but <laughs> yeah, this guy, um, he's down there and when he wakes or, uh, everybody that he's there with his men, as he calls them, the survivors, um, are trying to figure out where they're at, and he he says, "We're uh, have, has anyone seen uh, that they're in the he, <laughs> the way he pronounces it kills me." He says, "The Japanese, <laughs> the Japanese." Like I the mean, emphasis either... is on the wrong syllable. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, they the Japanese do not call it Japan, anyways. So he's wrong e- either way. True. Um, but yeah, he, uh, immediately the dude gets in, like, gets in there and talking to his boys and he's like, also those Portuguese scum. <laughs> the hate that this man carries in his heart for Portuguese, for the Portuguese, for the people of Portugal well, is very, very, almost as strong as the hate he has for seemingly everyone in Japan. Yeah. Because the Dutch and the Portuguese were at war at this point. Yeah. That makes sense. This was a um, war that lasted for about 50 years. We get the first great instance in um, the show of the use of the language barrier between the uh, between the two people, uh, between two people, when um, this guy, this um, assistant to one of the lords, or one of the, not lords, uh, the ruler of the place that he's currently in, um, sends down his men to go... Uh, retrieve. Oh yeah, Blackthorn. Yeah, but and uh, the, the entire the guy time, who, like you mean uh, yeah. Yabushigi, the guy who's yeah, the guy, that's the yeah. lord, right? Or like yeah, the, the one who's like the... trying, the one who's cry, trying to angle to scheme behind Toranaga's back, and then immediately yeah, Yabushige's uh, nephew, yeah, who's this guy uh, ends up being, mm-hmm. um, sends the men down there, and he sees them fighting with the the men down there, and he calls them savages, just as Black. <laughs> and shouts up that he's a savage yeah it's great everyone's a savage in this show turns out um great sequence here where he gets pulled up and he still can't really they can't hear each other uh, understand each other so he's he gets a guy who understands some oh yeah they uh, get the uh, local priest the yeah. local missionary who turns out to be the spy at the end right no 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 this guy's only here for this scene and he's very mad oh. at him because he's Protestant. There's a translator so he, guy that I thought ended up. Oh being yeah, a they spy. get a local. They get a local Christ, They get a local Christian villager who speaks a little bit of Portuguese to interpret for him, but he's not cutting it. So then yeah. they get the local priest, who immediately accuses them of being evil because he's Protestant. Well, okay, hold on, we gotta go back there because you're missing the pissing. Oh yeah, no. I think they. I think he gets pissed on after this. That comes a bit right? later. No, yeah. no, he gets pissed on first. Oh, it's first. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he says. He says he's, I, he says he's I translating on your for him. The old guy's doing the translation, and the he doesn't need the translation for forth. that because he gestures to his crotch. He's, yeah. yeah, he's pulling a Walter White. <laughs> <laughs> he's so, trying yeah. to get him to wipe down this. So nephew Sama has his men beat the shit out of him, and then he pisses on him. Yeah, it's great. And, and, and listen, so then I mean, they get it's, the, a, it's a deserved pissing. And that's and then we get the fire, and we also get Yabashigi saying, "Oh, I have no time for this Christian nonsense." Uh, yeah, that's listen. Um, that that's a uh, you can get some good use out of that. I don't have time for this Christian nonsense. Is very funny. Um, he also yeah, uh, Blackthorn the steps is on a cross. Portuguese, and yeah, he yeah. he step, They yell at him. He steps on a cross. Which is something like, that hmm, Je- the Japanese later would do to root out Christians hiding in their communities after the religion got banned. Because it's it was to see who got offended when you stepped on a cross. Oh, well, they would refuse to step on it. Oh, they was... would take them out and be like, "Step on this cross." And if they said no, they were like, "Oh, found the Christian." Yeah, then we got to boil to you. Hey, that's if nasty. you'd like to Which know they more. Do do. If you'd like to learn more, watch Martin Scorsese's Silence, which takes place about 50 years after the show. Oh, a good one, too. 
watch all of this show and then watch Martin Scorsese's Silence, which is probably like three hours long. Yeah. What's um, a mellow three hours? You're vibing. You're vibing. You're vibing. You're <laughs> well, there is a vibe. You're questioning there is a vibe. religion. You're questioning if God is real. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's a whole scene, uh, involving this Christian nonsense where the, um, it turns out the priest is Portuguese. And so he tries to, he keeps trying to get Blackthorn killed by saying he's a pirate. Uh, and the guy's not having any of it. Um, and the reason, the main reason we learn is why, why he's not having any of it is because he knows what's on the ship and would, it would be advantageous to have that at your disposal. Yeah. Um, it's a fun Specific- scene between him and the, his nephew where they're talking about where his nephew's pretty much picked up on what he's doing. And he says that his brothers never explained his son's great qualities. <laughs> Which is funny because it implies that his never talked, and he, he's always talked shit on his son. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, the, um, so one this of is where we get Black the politics. Men gets one of Blackthorn's men gets burnt alive, or not burnt alive, boiled alive. Boiled. And, uh... Yeah, and Yabashige listens to it. Yeah. Attempting to find some sort of philosophical revelation in the moment between life and death. And he still has yet to find it, apparently. So, instead, he has his courtesan and fuck his poet. Yeah, if it turns out, um, the moment of death isn't the only thing this guy likes to watch. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, he didn't know that, I don't think. It was her idea. And he's just like, hmm, Okay. He's like, hmm. I mean, listen, it's a pro strat, you know, listen. Are you interested in my services? You will be. And Um, then in the morning, he has a poet make a poem about the guy boiling to death. Yeah. It's a pretty good poem, not gonna lie. Now I know why that guy has his job, you know? I would would love Um, to be paid to make that kind of poetry. Yeah, would you be able to do it, like, on the spot when your, like, boss is, like, eating loudly next to you? Now, the question is whether Yabashige is fucking him or not. The answer is no, I would have a panic attack, Swanson. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, um, uh, roses are red. Uh, (laughs) Immediately just unsheaves his sword and decapitates you. (laughs) Which is something that we skipped over that, um... Yeah. A guy tried to give him... Oh, yeah, a guy tries to give, like, Blackthorn rights, and he gets cut down. Yeah, his head just goes off. <laughs> uh, it's really the only swordplay we get in this episode, which is kind of... Normally, I would say it's a, a net negative to not have any fun swordplay in an episode without the samurais, but I'm... I'm they really tease us with it. a lot of swordplay in this one. Like, they do a lot of, like, oh, slightly yeah. unsheathing their weapons. Oh, yeah, because... Yeah, grabbing yeah, the swords, this, looking at the this, swords... This is where we get to Toronaga going to Osaka Castle to talk to the council. Yeah. Then we have their meeting. Yeah, they're not the the meeting doesn't go well. Where they're mad that they he has the son he has the wife of the former t- regents at his castle, and so they demand he return her, and also they're going to hold a vote to impeach him, which will which would. Kill him, right? I mean, that's yeah, like immediately result in his death because they can just order him to commit suicide. Dang, it's wild. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, one of his re- retainers gets mad at them and draws his sword and accuses him. Yeah. And Toronagan's like, shut up, that. dude. And so the, re- the retainer agrees to kill himself and his family. <laughs> To save face. That's dedication. Uh, I think <laughs> Toronaga does spare him, though, doesn't he? He's no, talking he about spa- it later. He spares his wife because oh, okay. of her lineage. Also, fun fact in the novel, he orders him to commit suicide. Hmm. Interesting. And kill his son. Uh, so they made him nicer in this? Uh, well, I mean, the culture... <laughs> That would not be out of pocket behavior, in the time. I'm aware of that, but you know, <laughs> there is still yeah. human decency yes. <laughs> angle to things. <laughs> well, you go tell them that, Keo. Yeah, I'm gonna go down you'd, there and be like, Keo's gonna be like, Keo's gonna be like Kinshiro. 
<laughs> Kiyo's <laughs> It sounds like Kyo's going to be taking a very warm bath. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I'll go down there and I'll point at them and be like, you need to stop. This is not proper behavior. <laughs> this is not the way. They'd be like, oh, well, how about we slice you with our swords? I'd be like, no. <laughs> that will not be happening today. So Torunaga's, um, Torunaga sends his general... Uh, Hiramatsu to uh, to go investigate this uh, this guy. This barbarian ship, Blackthorn. Yeah, this barbarian man. Uh, back to uh, Yabashige, who is uh, moments after explaining his very clever plan to his nephew, <laughs> encounters said uh, general. And the general's like, all right, well, uh, hey, listen, you're cool with us and we're cool with you. So why don't we just yeah. take this guy off your hands and all of his stuff? Yeah, you're definitely not betraying us. Because if you were, I'd have to kill you on the spot. That's, yeah. you know, a lot, like, of, <laughs> a lot of backhandedness. That's like some that's sound logic, though, honestly. <laughs> he's really got his P's and Q's in order for that one. Yeah, he's like, well, listen, I trust that you have... You're doing everything in your power to be loyal to our lord. Puts hand should, on sword. It should be known what they're <laughs> what's so important on the ship is the cannons, because Japan right. did not have access to uh, high quality iron, so they had to import their cannons, which were from Europe, which meant they were very rare. So having them is yeah a big and deal. generally because they have twenty behind. of them or something. Yes, yeah. Um, and we later learn from a conversation that Blackburn ha- Blackthorn has with this uh, Spaniard who shows up. Love this guy, by the way. Oh, yeah. Rodriguez. <laughs> Rodriguez. Uh, played yeah. by... Um, I've seen this guy in stuff before. I think maybe he was in one of the Batman movies, the Nolan ones. Um, yeah, he's the mayor, I think, in The Dark Knight. But uh, he's kind of unrecognizable here. He's got a big beard and... Yeah, uh, so anyway. he's a sexy Spaniard who tells Blackthorn he's not his friend, which means he's a he is sexy his friend. Spaniard who is very dick focused in his language. Well, he is a sailor in the 1600s. He's talking a lot about like lick my peg. <laughs> yep. Suck my knob. Again, <laughs> a sailor in the 1600s. They didn't have um, much to do besides think of ways of new ways to say that. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah, they have like a little pipe that they sit that they look at the ocean and they think of new ways to talk about yes. their genitalia. If they weren't on watch, I think the strongest sailor is the one who knows the most nasty things to say. Yeah, yeah, I think that's actually true. Like they don't. It's not about like who could kill the most people or who has. It's like who has the most cutting insults. And well, killing people is a group effort. Junk. Effort. Yeah. So he. Um, him and Rodriguez, they meet up, they hang out. And what we learn later, um, near the end, is that uh, the ship was... Yes, the goal was to make it to uh, Japan with a five-ship, 500-crew fleet, fleet. It ended up being like ten people that made it to land. Um, well, because- but also, along the way, they were burning Catholic Portuguese bases. Well, they were. They did have a letter marquee from the rulers of Dutch the Dutch Republic. Yeah. So they weren't pirates, technically. True. They were just, you know... Uh, armed militiamen, <laughs> technically. Armed... Ba- they were legal bandits. Yeah. I mean, which is, like, the best kind of bandit to be, really. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah. Him and uh, Rodriguez, they get along for a little bit. Um, legal bandits they're... basically cops right <laughs> oh I mean yeah actually um, I was already pretty sold on this show but then this sequence on the boat I think is really well filmed yes really well directed um, just the back and just... forth of like cause the way the economy works in the scene you know the entire layout of the boat and like what's at stake and all that kind of stuff it works really well Oh, I think it's because we're becoming dad-aged. We're weak to dudes on a boat becoming friends. 
and having to overcome the rigors of the sea. Okay. Oh, I just think the way that when the <laughs> when the shit hits the fan and like the yeah, waters, yeah. yeah, it's just really well filmed. Yeah, it was pretty great. But seriously, who's not um, weak to that uh, that concept? <laughs> Women. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what is Titanic but two people <laughs> becoming friends on a boat? You're right. That's why it's one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. He. Um. Rodriguez goes overboard, and he manages to save him while uh, learning the Japanese word for row. Um, the most they manage to make it out he's of ever there. Ever set in his life. Honestly. Yeah. They yeah, managed to make it out of there, but Rodriguez is still out and about somewhere. So he and, uh he suggests going to find him. And uh Hiramatsu is not going to let him, but then Yabushi is like, like, Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. And so uh they go looking for him. There's a great bit here where um Blackthorn wants to they find him at the end of at the bottom of a cliff. And uh, Black Forum wants to do it, but they're not going to let him. So he, uh, he, can teach you he, he, yeah, he picks up on the fact that if he challenges, if no. he asks Yabashige to do it, he'll have to do it because otherwise he'll look weak in front of his men. Well, it's kind of a sort of a quasi misunderstanding. Well, that's yeah. This is the uh, second great <laughs> example in the show of the language barrier reaping benefits for the the way that the the show is organized because he is trying to get him to just do it and then he realizes that he says point blank like i can make you do this because you don't want to you're you'll look like a coward in front of your men and then he says to his men don't you understand he's trying to make me look weak so they they basically come to the same conclusion yes through different methods so Yabushigi, um, to his credit, climbs down the rain-soaked cliff. Yeah. And then and falls, falls halfway. <laughs> um, also, at this point, this was perhaps the most questionable line of dialogue in the show. Although I did laugh at it, so maybe it worked. But um, he, at one point, refers to Yabushige as a whore bitch turd. <laughs> Which is like some real 4chan, like, not Again, even, like some real, like, sailor. subreddit conversation. Well, here's what sailors did, It's like did, someone Swanson. learning swears for the first time. They What they do is they go through permutations of every possible combinations of swears, and they start saying them out loud and see which, one, which ones actually stick. Well, I feel like it's time to bring whore bitch turd back. Oh, so he's probably got weird brain diseases from the sailor's diet. From eating so many weevils and hard tack. True. And also, who knows how long he was drinking wa- that water before it was act- like after it had gone actually like mm-hmm. not usable anymore. So yeah, uh, Yabushige lands hard on the rocks, but gets up, pulls Rodriguez Pro- to safety, and then falls probably into has the a water. concussion. But yeah, uh, and tries yeah, to climb gets- back in. But it's not yeah. it's not going well. So he pulls out his sword and aims it at his gut, and Blackthorn is astonished because he saw this man like risking his life, and then at the same time he's so quickly willing to throw it away, and he has to reconcile with his own preconceived notions of what courage is. Yeah, it's a very cool sequence, uh, especially when Yabashiga gets back at the top and he just bows and Yabushige. yeah. So, it's yeah, a real the face, game recognized game moment. The face, tu- the face turn has begun. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then there's a there's a great sort of closing, not the closing closing sequence, but a great sort of wrap up with with him and Rodriguez, where Rodriguez is like, "Yeah, so I found this stuff that was on your ship," and it's the big reveal that he's like. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, and so and so Blackthorn tries to Blackthorn tries to crush his skull with the yeah. pen nearby. <laughs> Rodriguez and he takes out the out pistol, pistol that the captain killed himself with. And uh, so he's like, "Okay, I guess you win this time." And Rodriguez reveals that he's going to give this information to the Portuguese, which probably makes him like a essentially a dead man if he weren't yeah. about to meet the Lord. One of the lords of the land. Um, 
Because at this time, the Portuguese are very powerful in Japan, aren't they? Stairs? Yes, they they had the trade they had the trade monopoly because they were the only ones who knew how to cross the Cape of Africa. Dang, it's, that's hardcore. Which is kind of funny because that is where all the sea traffic that was going through the Red Sea previously is going through now. And now the fall's coming to the southern hemisphere, so the storms are going to get a lot worse. Yeah. Insurance rates are going to climb, and there's, and you have to have a specifically rated ship to cross the keep during the winter time. So who knows what will happen if the blockade's still going then, since there are so few of those ships. Who's to say? <laughs> um, but yeah, that um, platform gets uh, escorted to the castle and meets with uh, the the Lord uh, Torinaga, and that's uh, that's pretty much the end. Although we did sort of skip over the little bits that we get of uh, Lady Mariko. Yeah. Um, she does. Once she gets it, the least to do in this first episode, which is maybe a, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, she we gets to hang out with the her. lady. She gets to hang out with the lady who's husband's committee or family meeting. Yeah, and the lady who's um, taking care of the ha- the hair, right? The hair to the throne. Yeah, she has to talk. He, she has to talk her out of killing herself. Yeah, because She's it would like, be listen, a bad. We've it all would be been a, there. Listen, it would be a bad look for us. <laughs> Yeah, it's a real, like, uh, corporate answer, actually, if you think about it. It's like early corporations here. Like, uh, oh, listen, this would be a bad look for the company. Um, but yeah, the, she gets the least to do, but there's enough intrigue there that um, it's a good ground It's a good ground setting for what uh, her role as the in the show moving forward. Also, um, her and Toranaga seem to be teaming up at the end. Team up, guys. Uh, that's... Oh, you, you love to see it. Yeah, so we can end with uh, Blackthorn seeing the uh, city of Osaka. Oh, being yeah, dis- after... Uh, <laughs> being astonished that they aren't living in mud huts. Yeah, um, Rodriguez is like, yeah, you think... Uh, you, you're you over here thinking that we're the center of the universe, and then you go up... Why don't you go up to the deck and take a look at the town? And he's like, oh, they're not savages after all, it turns out. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much the end of the episode. Uh, what are our thoughts here? Good program. I love it. Tune in. I already watched all the other episodes that aired. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's a... how you know Stairs real in on something. <laughs> when I when you know Stairs in on it, when next week on the pod he's going to be like, I watched all of Shogun. <laughs> Except, Except it's coming this... out weekly, so. <laughs> yeah, but um. But there's already yeah. four episodes out. I know. It looks like I got. It looks like I got some catching up to do. It's a tune in for uh, me, folks. This is, yeah, this is a tune in for me. A big old tune in. Capital is T. This the capital first good I. show of 2024. Yes. Yes. Really? Correct. I mean, <laughs> well, Pokemon Concierge we tuned in on, but that was from last year, technically. That's not good. Oh well. Um. I mean that's pretty good for us. We had something like we tune yeah, in on like one third of everything we watch. It's actually been less the past couple of years, but but hey, listen, this one's a tune in. Kicks ass. It's a good show. I would highly recommend. Good program. Um, yeah, that's it. That's a tune in on Shogun. And that'll about do it for this week's episode of the show. Uh, we'll be back the next week. Don't you guys worry. Same TV time, same TV channel. Hey, what are we watching? Next week on the show, we're watching the adventures of Horny Man. Hey! <laughs> his name is, his, listen, his name is Edward Hornyman, and he's uh, got a, 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 he's inherited an estate that might be part of a weed empire. We're watching Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman. All right. Next week on the pod. Good stuff. So until next week when we're cracking wise and talking real British-like, keep watching.
Bye. It's over. I found him. Uh, hey, folks. It's time for the TV Tuners Fact of the Week. Uh, did you know that Stairmaster was the Shogun in Japan for exactly three hours before he was assassinated? The public record says I committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs>